Imagine this is your kitchen, and this is you standing looking at it in the early planning phase of your new IKEA kitchen, and you're looking up on the bulkhead and thinking, what do we do about that one? Well, you came to the right place, because in this video, we are going to discuss the bulkheads sitting on top of our kitchen cabinet sometimes. And sometimes we also have closed off the gap between the upper cabinets and the ceiling. And the initial thoughts of many is to take everything down. But I got to tell you, that's not always a great idea because in many cases we can have a ton of cables and wires and ducts and whatnot in that space. So we want to think twice before we tear everything down. And in this video, I will give you a few tips on how to determine whether you should leave them in place or not. And I will also share with you what you need to do if you decide to keep them. So let's get started. When I visit a client uh, in order to make a new layout plan and there's a bulkhead or the cabinets are closed off to the ceiling on top of the cabinets, there's a few factors we need to consider when we discuss whether to take that down or not. And the first one is, could there be anything inside that will prevent us from just taking it down and have an open space we can use for cabinets? Or Will there be a duct from the fan or anything else? It could be a lot of cables and so forth. And uh, the next thing we look at is the ceiling height. Because sometimes there isn't sufficient ceiling heights to have cabinets running all the way up. So taking down the bulkhead might not be the best option anyway. And the last thing we look at is the footprint. And by footprint, I mean, where will the new cabinets go? Will they sit in the same place as the old ones? because sometimes that can be the deciding factor whether we take down the bulkhead or not. And before we look at each of those uh, three items individually, I want to say that sometimes it can be a combination of all three. And uh, sometimes you can just decide to keep the bulkhead because it's possible and you don't want to put on that extra expense. It is to take it down and maybe put something else up. So there can be many reasons and any reasons is valid. A very good reason to keep the bulkhead in your layout plan when you are preparing a new kitchen is that it can be full of cables and wires. And sometimes those wires cannot just be tucked into the wall and rerouted without a lot of work. And as you see in this picture, that was exactly the case. Nevertheless, the client wanted the cabinets to run all the way up, so it came with a cost that all those wires had to be pushed back into the wall and uh, drywall added so we could hang the suspension rails. So you want to look into this and you can do that by poking a hole into your bulkhead and see what's inside. And based on what you see, you can decide whether you want to keep it or it can come down. Next up, and maybe even more important or certainly equally important is the ceiling height. Because what if you don't have sufficient ceiling height in your room to have cabinets running all the way up and so if you take the bulkheads down, you have to close up, maybe if you want to, but you have to consider, do I need to take those bulkheads down just to put up something else to close that gap from my 30 inch wall cabinets to the ceiling? I have a number of videos dealing with the ceiling height and where the rails go. And as you can see up in the right hand corner now, I have put a link in for one of those. So watch that. And check it out because if you don't have 94 and a half inches from the floor to the ceiling, you're not going to be able to squeeze in 40 inch upper cabinets or 90 inch pantry cabinets anyway. So taking down those bulkheads can be wasted energy if you have to go with 30 inch upper cabinets and 80 inch pantry cabinets. So that's important. Check the ceiling height. The last thing I want to mention before we get to the uh, how to cut the bulkhead, is that sometimes your footprint can be uh, deciding whether you want to keep the bulkhead or not. And as you can see in this picture, this kitchen has a, a lowered ceiling, which would be a lot of work to take that down and redo everything. And in the plan, we managed to use a combination of 30 inch wall cabinets and 40 inch wall cabinets. And I think it turned out great. And it would have been so much work to take down that area of uh, lowered ceiling just to get 40 inch uh, cabinets all over. And this kitchen is fairly big, so there's plenty of storage room nevertheless. So look at your footprint and decide 
whether you can keep that bulkhead or lower its ceiling in your new kitchen. Sometimes it makes sense. So enough of all that planning. Now it's time to cut the bulkhead to the right height because even though we have the bulkhead, I still want to put those cabinets up at the correct height, meaning that the rail has to be sitting at a certain distance from the floor. And in this case, the bulkhead are a bit too low. So I cut them in place. This is how I do it. And if you have watched any of my rail videos, then you will know that the right height for the suspension rail from the floor to the lower edge of that rail will be, what is it? Tell me. Nah, it's not a quiz. I'm just trying to be uh, entertaining. But here's the answer. 82 and 3 sixteenths above the floor. That's right. The distance from the floor to the lower edge of the suspension rail is 82 inches and 3 sixteenths if you have 30 inch uppers and or 80 inch pantry cabinets. And with the laser sitting at that distance now, I can measure from the laser line and make a mark on the bulkhead where I need to cut it. And that distance, what is this now? Two inches and five eighths. No! No, it's not. It's absolutely wrong. The right distance when you want a tight fit between the bulkhead and the upper cabinets, it's two inches and three eighths of an inch. So that's why I want to cut. Exactly. So now I can move my laser upwards. And with the laser in place, on the mark you just made, you're ready to cut the bulkhead. And when the bulkhead has been cut away, you're ready to put up the rail and hang the cabinets. When you have a tight fit to the bulkhead or the ceiling, it can be a little bit uh, tricky to hang the cabinet. So I have a video showing how to do just that as well. You can find it at the end of this video. And now before you go, let me just show you one final tip. And that is if you have a uh, vertical duct coming down like the one you see in the picture that is for the vent hood. You don't have to take that one down either if you have the vent hood sitting in the same location because it's really easy to reuse and this is what you do. In this room, the ceiling height is really uh, high. That means that the 40 inch upper cabinets are not sitting all the way to the ceiling. So what I do to begin with, I put up the rails that are sitting on both sides of that duct coming down. And with the rails in place, I can assemble and hang the two adjacent wall cabinets. Then I make sure that those cabinets are absolutely plumb and sitting at the same horizontal level. There can sometimes be a little difference. And when that is in uh, place, I can make a line uh, to where I want to cut that uh, box around the vent duct. And I can do that in one of two ways. I can either push my level towards the wall and make a line, or I can adjust my laser to the very height of the cabinet and make a line ready for cutting. Now I once again bring out my oscillating cutting tool and I cut the bit of that uh, box around the wind that we don't need. And when that is done, I can hang my cabinet. And uh, it's a tight fit. So again, you wanna find that video where I'm explaining how to hang a cabinet all the way up under the bulkhead or the ceiling. That will give you those tips you need to make it go in very easy. And that's it. I hope you liked this video and I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.